everyone, and welcome back to Casual Climbers, the podcast by and for beginning hikers and those who may not quite be physically ready to tackle the Appalachian Trail. I'm your host, Donna Padrick, and alongside me is my husband and adventure buddy, Roy. Hi, Donna. Hi, Roy. So in this podcast, we provide you with information, tips, and tricks on how to get into hiking here in the Blue Ridge area. We will cover some of the hundreds of trails in the various parks and forests in the region, and hopefully entertain you at least a little bit along the way. A little bit. So we're two middle-aged, not-in-the-best-shape hikers. Not at all in the best shape. And we felt it yesterday. Who love the outdoors and want to share our experiences with you. So this week, Donna, we introduce a new format for our podcast. Mm -hmm. Starting with this episode, each month we will have two shorter and then two full-length podcasts. We're going to call these shorter ones Trail Snacks. And they will feature only our trail review. Mm -hmm. The longer ones, the full Casual Climbers podcast each month, will have your fun fact segment and a business or product review. Right. So what do you say, Donna? Let's get into today's trail snack. Let's go. So here's today's Crabtree Falls Loop Trail by the numbers. The distance is 2.73 miles in a loop. The time it took us was two hours and five minutes. Now... Of that time, an hour and 16 minutes was moving time. So as you can tell right away, we spent a good 45 minutes enjoying the waterfall and this amazing vista that we're going to talk about. The lowest point was 3,175 feet, and the highest point was 3,650 feet. So it's a 475-foot elevation change. The friendliness, it's very, very rocky. And there are some steep inclines, up to 20% grades, and sure-footedness is definitely required on this trail. Yeah, it's always confusing to me when we're walking along a path. Sometimes it's smooth and wide, and then all of a sudden there's rocks and roots. And also, on this trail, I noticed, okay, so sometimes on a trail, when they've gone through and they've refreshed the trail blazes, the, the paint on the trees to let you know where you're supposed to go, yeah. There's these rocks that come out of the ground in the path that are very, very high tripping hazards. There were a lot of those. Sometimes when they maintain a trail, they'll paint the tip of those rocks that come right, out of the... Right. These were not painted. No. It's... So the, the first thing we should tell everybody is that this trail is right on the Blue Ridge Parkway near Marion, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And so to get there, just type in Crabtree Falls Parking Area on whatever map app you use, Google Maps, Apple Maps, whatever you use, and it should get you there. It's right on the Blue Ridge Parkway at mile marker 339. So that's how to get there. Once you're there, the parking area is pretty big. Well, there, now, okay, so we passed by one parking area. That's for a picnic area. Okay, all right. And that's on the other side of the Blue Ridge Parkway. Right. So if you were to get to, you'd have to, I don't know if you can. Get, get to from the, the picnic area to you go up to Crabtree Falls. I don't think you'd want to do that because it'd be a lot more walking. And, and you'd, yeah, and you'd have. I, I'm not sure that you can honestly. Yeah, because, because it's on the other side of the and road, and it goes down quite a bit. Okay, so well, so there, so there's. Don't park at the Crabtree picnic parking area. Correct. Yep. Park at the Crabtree Falls parking area, and there are two buildings in the parking area. One of them looked like it was an interpretive center of some kind that has long since been. Abandoned. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And another one was some house that had also long since been had been abandoned. It was strange seeing those yeah. there in the parking area. But anyway, even so, there's there's still probably maybe 25, 30 parking spots there. Maybe we should start counting like parking spots. Mm, yeah, probably. But as long as we tell them that there's, there's, there's enough. There's, there's a lot. There's ample parking. When we were leaving, somebody did actually wait for our parking spot. But getting there, there was plenty of spots to park in. Yeah, but if he did just kept going. Yeah, there, there was, was. There was a few on the <laughs> other side. Yeah. So at this at the parking area, there are some porta potties. But they are just porta potties. Right. I didn't check them out. I didn't need them. I want to say, since we're talking about bathrooms right now, that very shortly in this hike, you come across a campground yeah. area. Yes. And I ended up using the bathroom at the campground area on our way back to the vehicle, and that does have running water. There are two sets of bathrooms, one in the area that, that we went to, that we went through, and then on the other side of the road, because there is a road 
off the Blue Ridge Parkway that gets to this campground. And this campground's fairly large. I, I don't know how many spaces, probably 50. There's a ton of spaces there. It was a cool little campground. Yeah, it is a cool little campground. And it, it may be something that we check out. It's really nice. Yeah. And so there's bathrooms there too. So we've covered the parking in the bathrooms. Okay. Now let's get to the actual trail. Okay. What did you think of the first part of the trail? Well, I thought that the first part of the are you when you're saying the first part of the trail, you're talking about the the part from the trailhead. To getting walking from the trailhead to, to the wherever. waterfall. Yeah. Okay. Well, very, very first thing that you see, you come across is a a what is it called? Amphitheater. The amphitheater. Yeah. Yeah. It's an old amphitheater. It is also kind of abandoned, but it looked like it was really nice back in the day. And I think it still has power. There were power kind there, of Yeah, there were power, power conduits lines going to it, but buried. like all of the, the the weeds are taken over it yeah. and the the grass has grown up through the the concrete and stuff. It's it's kind of a kind of sad to see cuz it looked like it at one point was up, really nice. Yeah. I wonder what that was used for. I don't know. I mean, it, it, there's Shakespeare plenty of seating. The park It'd be great for, yeah. for Shakespeare in the park. It'd be great for, you know, Mu- small like, music. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Some like bluegrass or, you know, something. Yeah. It'd be great for that. And hmm. so that's right there. Like, yeah. It's, it's very, maybe, very short. Maybe a hundred feet inside the You the can be a unfit hiker and get to that, to in that like amphitheater. Yes. Yeah. I probably, you could take a wheelchair to it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I don't think there were any stairs, but anyway. And then just beyond that, that's when the actual loop starts. Right. And that's right there at the campground, mm-hmm. right there at the Crabtree Falls campground. It's a little confusing. When when you pass the amphitheater and you get to the campground, which way do you go? You get, so there's a sign there that says loop A or loop B. There's only one loop. <laughs> well, so, but, but I mean, I felt like getting across the. Uh, but was, you're right. If you. We went counterclockwise, which is the way that the Kamut app had us had us going. You do have to kind of cross a, you cross a parking lot and then you cross a road, the campground road, and then if you don't really pay attention, it's easy to miss the trail because you have to go kind of hard right. Okay. To get to it, but you're right. Yeah, you're right. It's it's a little weird. Yeah, I just remember looking around and thinking, "Oh, we're in a campground. I wasn't ready for this." Yeah. So once you get past that, then the trail, in my opinion, the trail begins in earnest. Yes. It starts in the woods and that's when it, that's when the rocks and roots start happening. Mm-hmm. Yes. And also the elevation changes. Yeah. That's when it starts to climb. Well, in the beginning, did it? Oh, no, it was, you're right. It was a steady decline. Yeah. Yeah. It was a nice, gentle you kind decline. Of, you hike down to the waterfall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you, as you go through, and it's pretty, but there's very little water on that on that because of the, the way that we went. Now, I want to just say this right out of the gate. I think if we do this trail again, I think we're going to go the other way. Is I that- think so too, and we'll talk about why here in just a minute mm-hmm. once we get to it. So the the trail is pretty unremarkable as you get there. I will say this: there are a lot of steps mm-hmm. in in on this trail a lot of steps there are i think seven sets of stairs yeah i i don't remember how many sets of stairs i just remember counting the stairs yeah so some of them like this is in order as we went there were 27 wooden ones 23 wooden ones and then the rock steps became started to happen in 24 one rock one set of rock steps had 33 steps Mm mm-hmm and then there was another 11 and then a few here and there it's the trail went from piece of cake to break a sweat pretty quick yeah on these steps well okay so maybe the benefit to the way that we went is that we went down those stairs and and then but going up the other side was challenging yeah it the the incline was was pretty drastic and so once you get down there you finally actually get to crabtree falls Mm -hmm. you hear it from for a long way for a long way before you can see it yeah so crabtree falls is really really impressive yes it is 70 feet tall but it feels much taller than that yes yeah it's pretty dramatic you get down there 
and there's a bridge mm-hmm. that crosses over the the stream where the waterfall flows down and it from that wood bridge you get really stunning views yes. of the waterfall it's quite lovely and then you can climb around we went away from the waterfall to climb around a little bit well, not climb around but to find a rock to sit on and eat our lunch and just enjoy the waterfall it was great we yeah we went in and went around to the right and there's spots there where you can like i did i sat on a rock took my hiking shoes off and put your feet in the put water my feet in the water it was ice cold mm-hmm. it was ice cold there is a pool at the top of like right there at the base of where the water falls on the waterfall that you it would be very challenging to get to. I think so. I, I, I worry so much about slippery rocks. There, yeah. I mean, you'd have to really scramble up a good 30 feet mm-hmm. of boulders to try to get to this little pool area. I don't even know how deep it is. But when we were getting there, there was a couple coming out that were completely soaked. Yeah, so they, they got in the water fully. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that waterfall is really dramatic. It's, it's, it's supposedly beautiful. the highest waterfall on a trail along the Blue Ridge Parkway, all 469 miles. So highest being that it's the highest elevation of a waterfall, not highest being the like the 70 feet tall um, part of it. Or, or is it both or what? The tallest waterfall at okay. 70 feet Okay. on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Okay. All right. Now, there are obviously much taller waterfalls off the Blue Ridge, but this is the... The tallest that you can get to from the Blue Ridge Parkway. Got it. Okay. And then, as if that wasn't enough, and it would be mm-hmm. for this trail. And like I said, it's only a 2.73 mile loop. It's not very long. And then there's something else that really puts this in a list of maybe top five, top 10, certainly. After you get, go up and you begin the incline from the bottom of the waterfall, and the incline is severe. It is a long incline. It's a good mile of pretty steep yeah, inclines. Yeah, I was, I was pretty proud of myself for how I, how I was doing. Yeah. And there are benches along the way. We should say that. Yes. There are benches along the way. Yeah, not as many as I would have liked. Not as many as I would have liked. But there, there are benches <laughs> along the way. But after you go up, maybe about a quarter of a mile from the, from the waterfall on the trail, there's this little tiny offshoot, and it's easy to miss if you don't see it because the trail makes a curve to the right. But if you kind of look to your left, you can get to the edge of the mountain, mm-hmm. and there is a dramatic view yeah. of the Blue Ridge Mountains from there. And you're standing right on the edge. It is a pure drop. Yes. You're on a ledge. There's no rails. <laughs> yeah. So if you go there, listeners, be extremely careful. Yes, you're taking your own life in your hands if you go there, but the view is breathtaking. Oh, it's it's incredible. And to say that after driving the Blue Ridge to get there, all the pull-offs that you can stop and oh. see, all of the overlooks and everything. This one is it's still it's we've got pictures of it and Yeah, they're on the they're on the website. It's going to Trail Photos episode 21. Mhm. It's, it's just so impressive. But if you are unfit to the point where you don't think you can handle this hike, then drive the Blue Ridge, pull off, and <laughs> and, and, and enjoy every single wonderful thing that's on the Blue Ridge. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's impressive. I, I, we weren't expecting it because there were no reviews on the, the, that on, the trail about rev- on the trails app that I use that that talked about that, and it was a very wonderful pleasant surprise mm-hmm. i was so happy with that it's it's a good view you could go there and sit there for hours if you really wanted to we were yeah. only we only sat there for a few minutes and enjoyed it but you know we both got pictures and everything so yeah. it's re- it's really quite spectacular so this trail offered a, a gorgeous waterfall and an amazing mountain vista all in one right and i want to say there was another Another waterfall, a smaller waterfall. We didn't take that offshoot to go see that other smaller waterfall. I don't, I, we call it a waterfall because, you know, our, our standards for calling something a waterfall are water's falling very six low. inches or more. It's a waterfall. For, right. Yeah. And this, I, so I, maybe we should have, but we had been hiking for a long time and I was getting pretty tired. And we just kind of, you know, you we kind of looked over to our left and saw that and we're like, oh, 
another waterfall. Okay. And then <laughs> and kept hiking. But I'm sure that that was also another really pleasant place to stop and rest and just take in, you know, probably. The I, yeah. I don't know if it was another waterfall or a view of the same falls. Mm. I don't know. We, we, you're right. We didn't take it. And we probably should next time if we go. It's a much shorter loop. So if you don't do the full loop all the way around, you can take this short loop mm-hmm. and just do that. And it, that's only like a mile and a half total, if that. But we could hear the water falling. We could. So yeah, we, we knew could that. hear the water falling. Yeah. So overall, this, this trail, is it, it exceeded my expectations. I knew that we were going to see a waterfall, but I did not expect the added bonus of a, of a mountain vista that you can walk right up to the edge of the mountain on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit farther of a drive from where we live, North Greenville. To get there, it was, what, over two hours? Two hours and 30 minutes it took us, but we could have gotten there in under two hours if we had taken the highways, but any chance I get to take the Blue Ridge Parkway, I yes. always take. Yeah, it was, I mean, you did the driving, I did the, the being in awe of the <laughs> view around. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard not to stop at every single overlook and just yeah. enjoy. There were a lot of mountain bikers out yesterday <sighs> on, the Blue, Ridge on the Blue Ridge Parkway. And I get it, you know, the yeah. Blue Ridge Parkway is great and you know, they have every right to be on the road as as Anybody vehicles else? do, but it it, makes it me really scared. makes it challenging because well, cuz traffic, I mean, the oh, road's sorry. narrow anyway. It's curvy, so passing them is challenging a lot of times you have mountain going up on one side and down on the other and yeah i don't trust other vehicles that they want to pass these bicycles when they've got a double yellow line it's it's yeah there's it's always a double yellow line on there so is it yeah there's no passing now you're allowed to pass the cyclists if it's clear but i mean there's so many curves and switchbacks where you're blind yeah so you can't always see that and my my biggest complaint is when they're going uphill, they're obviously going much slower, oh, yeah. right? And some of them are going like two miles an hour, just huffing and puffing up these inclines. And you got a line of cars behind them just waiting. Yeah. It's it's so, rough. I get that they, they have every right to be there, but mm-hmm. it, it just, it, it makes it challenging. If well, you're okay. So here's the thing. If you're a car that wants to drive really slow on the Blue Ridge Parkway, well, I, I've seen you do this. You'll pull off and let the cars behind you go on by. You'll get give them a chance to go on by. I don't see. I've never seen bikers do that. Yeah, and never seen bikers do that. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. I wonder why. I mean, because like you said, they're huffing and puffing going up the mountain. You would think they'd want a break. <laughs> I'd want a break. Yeah, I, I would think so. <laughs> I, I would not ride a bicycle on a Blue Ridge, but right. I mean, more power to them. That is right. a challenge. It is. It's it a is a challenge. One hundred percent. So anyway, yeah. that's a rant about bicyclists. Over. I, I get irritated with them sometimes. (laughs) So overall, would you classify this as a piece of cake, break a sweat, or feel the pain? Feel the Or feel feel the burn burn or a pain bringer? So like you said, it started out piece of cake because until until we started going down, it was piece of cake. And then even when we were going down on the one side, we were like, I don't think we broke a sweat when we got to Crabtree Falls. I don't think we broke a sweat at all. It yeah. was the way away from Crabtree yeah. Falls coming back. That's when I was it, drenched in sweat. Yeah, we both 100% broke yeah. a sweat. My mom told me that her mom used to say, men sweat, women perspire, and no, wait, men, what was it? Horses sweat, men perspire, and women glow. I was doing a lot of glowing yesterday. <laughs> you were sweating, Donna. I was sweating. Were sweating. <laughs> we were both and sweating. so was I. My, I was soaked. My shirt was soaked yeah. when we got out. And it wasn't even that hot yesterday no. up there. No. So yeah, it definitely was a break of sweat. And probably reached into the feel the burn because that incline, such a long section of incline. Yeah. It was very challenging mm-hmm. to get up. So yeah, it. I definitely a break of sweat, probably a feel the burn. Yeah. But, but worth it, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I do wonder, I mean, we've been doing this for how long? Since Christmas Day of 2023? Six months. Six yep. months. So I was wondering if my body was going to get in better shape and I was going to be less of an unfit hiker. I don't think I really need to worry about that too much. But 
I think that my legs, just from the fact that we are hiking on a more on on this regular of a basis, I think that I think when we started hiking, this would have I would have said, you know, maybe pain bringer. For yeah, <laughs> I, I think I would have been hurting today more than I am. I think so too. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not sore today. Yeah, I'm not like I have been on some some other ones, but. Just I was I was just drenched and drained yesterday. Yeah. Afterward, so yeah. And you did drink. You you filled up your water bladder thing. I did. I did. Some... I filled it up in a mountain stream, and it was so good. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Drinking mountain water now. I will say this: some people say it's perfectly safe to drink straight without any filters. I use a survival filter mm-hmm. on my on my water bladder. Because I don't want any microorganisms getting to me. Yes. So I use a, a survival filter that filters all that stuff out. But the water so it was it was ice cold and really great. It was still cold when we got back to the Jeep. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. It was still cold. It, it, it's so good. Yeah. I love drinking out of the mountain streams. Once properly filtered, of properly course. Properly filtered, yeah. When we started this adventure, our good friend Joe Progar that we work with he's a hiker and he's the one that brought to to our attention about get get a filter for a water bottle and fill it up in a water stream because that way you're not carrying the weight of water from start to finish you're only you know you're you're if you know you're hiking near water that's flowing then yeah just fill it up a little bit right so we yeah. have we have the water bottles the individual bottles with the filter mm-hmm. in it but this is my full water bladder holds over a gallon of water and it's not too bad. It's not too heavy. I mean, my pack is heavier than yours because I have the first aid kit and the axe and the knife and, of course, my water bladder. But but you, it's still not too bad. You bring an axe with you? I do. Huh? Yeah. In case of what? In case? Zombie attack. Uh-huh. So it's not for the Sasquatch or anything. It's not for Bigfoot. I would never attack a Sasquatch. Never? No. Uh-huh. Not even if a Sasquatch was, like, trying to attack you? No. I would just let it happen. No, you wouldn't. I would. I would. Well, at least I know where to get the axe from. If, if you it's do in my get backpack. It. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's in my back. No, 100% for a zombie attack. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, so that's that's the trail today. So what do you think of the trail snacks, Donna? I I like it. I like it very much. It's a good format. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to do these twice a month mm-hmm. and we'll do longer ones the other, the off weeks. So week one, we'll do a trail snack. Week two, we'll do a full. Week three, we'll do a trail snack. Week four, we'll do a full. That's how we'll do it moving forward. Okay. Unless we hear from our listeners who, who are like, hey, bring back the Donna's fun facts every week. And then we'll be like, okay. Yeah. So that's a show this week, guys. Trail snacks. Inaugural episode. We covered Crabtree Falls Loop Trail in right off the Blue Ridge Parkway near Marion, North Carolina. It's a wonderful trail. You see a waterfall, a gorgeous mountain vista that surprised me, and I was so happy to see it. Mm -hmm. But it is definitely a challenging hike, especially if you go all the way around the loop. You could just go to Crabtree Falls, view the falls, and then turn around and go back. That'd be a much easier hike, but we did the full loop. Yeah. For you guys, so that you would know what it's like. Right. (laughs) And for us. So definitely, we recommend it. Donna and I both recommend it. It's a great, especially if you're on the Blue Ridge Parkway, because when you drive the Blue Ridge, you're sitting down and enjoying it for most of the time. This is a nice way to get, you know, an hour and a half, two hours, stretch your legs after sitting and and driving along the Blue Ridge Parkway. Yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, we drove the Blue Ridge Parkway last October, and this would have been the short end into the waterfall and out. That would have been a good little hike. We we tried that really, really hard one, that really, really long one. Yeah. And that broke us for the whole rest of yeah, the Yeah, but it was worth it. It was worth it. Yeah. It was. So thanks so much for listening. Please subscribe to us in whatever podcast app you use and be sure to leave us a review. That's how we, our show grows. Feel free to check out our trail photos at casualclimbers.podbean.com. And if you have a question, comment, or just want to drop us a line, you can reach us at casualclimberspodcast at gmail.com. So you didn't know that I had an axe in my bag? I mean, maybe subconsciously I knew, but I guess it hadn't occurred to me. And and then I thought, well, wait, we're not chopping wood or anything. Like, why do we have an axe? Just in case we do need to chop wood. But of course, I think 
the primary reason is for zombie attacks. I don't. I, it's going to happen. Really? If, yeah, we're going to run across a zombie raccoon, and you're going to be real happy I have my axe with me. Maybe I'll start bringing my, my knife that my son Joe gave me last year. That he Sure, could. that's a nice knife. I have a, I have a knife in my backpack, too. I have a lot of... Those things are heavy. I have a lot of weapons. I, that makes no sense to me. I don't... Well, um, maybe, maybe just watch your P's and Q's out on the trail then. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you out on the trails. 